Elisa here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to what is going to be a very long video. So buckle up. I've been wanting to film this video for a really long time. As some of you may remember, I filmed a video about decks that were leaving my collection some time ago and that deck, that list has changed so much and I wanted to just share with you decks that are, I should say, probably leaving my collection. I definitely reserve the right to change my mind. But there are quite a few things here I want to share with you guys. Some decks I will probably show you a lot of the cards, or maybe even all of the cards. And some decks I will probably just breeze by. It just kind of depends on how much I think you might have seen the images. But I'm going to dive right in because there is so much to talk about. So the first one I want to talk about is an out-of-print deck called The Star That Never Walks Around by Stella Bennett. Now this is a really cool Native American tarot. And... It's just not one that I particularly feel called to work with. It's got quite a beefy guidebook. Um, and the cards themselves, they're a really nice size. If I was more attracted to this particular artwork, these would be, I would be all about these. I'm gonna zoom us in and we'll just go through the cards probably pretty quickly. I'm just gonna flip through them. This isn't meant to be a full detailed walkthrough, but I just want you to get a feel for the artwork. So we have the Magician. High Priestess, Empress, Emperor, Hierophant, Lovers, Chariot, Strength, Hermit, Wheel of Fortune, Justice, Hanged Man, Death. I love the astrological um, symbols on the front though. Temperance, Devil, Tower, Star, Moon, Sun, Judgment, that's crazy, that's like a spider, oh, trippy, The World, Ace of Thunderbirds, it looks like, yeah, Thunderbirds, Two of Thunderbirds, Three of Thunderbirds, oh, I'm kind of messing up the order of these, so let's just go like this, Three, Four, Five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then we have the page, knight, I'm guessing this is the wand suit, queen and king. Next we have the butterflies, I'm guessing this is, hmm, ace, two, is this the sword suit, three, four, I'm guessing this is swords. Five, yeah, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. The page, knight, queen, king, and then we're on to cups, or in this case frogs, ace, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <coughs> Excuse me. Page. Oops. Knight. Queen. King. And turtles, which must be pentacles. Ace. I love the yin yang there. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and the page, knight, queen, King, um, there's our title card, and that was the Fool that we should have seen in the beginning. Um, so we have, I'm just going to put the majors back in order here, 19, 18, 17, 16, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 
and the Fool. So this deck is back in order. I'm going to zoom this back out. So this is the Star That Never Walks Around. It's a really nice cardstock. Like it feels decently sturdy. And it's a nice size for a round deck. So a lot of round decks are a lot bigger. This one feels like a good size. It'd be easy to shuffle. It's just not one I feel called to work with. So I'm going to be rehoming this one. As with all the other decks I'm going to show, if there's any decks that I show that you're interested in, feel free to reach out to me and we can talk about it. But this is The Star That Never Walks Around by Stella Bennett. Next up, and I'm not going to show this because I have a full walkthrough actually of this deck. I have the new version of the Oracle of the Radiant Sun. This comes in this really cool sort of drawer packaging. This is a great deck. The only reason I'm rehoming this one is because I have the uh, original printing which is the one that I've decided to keep, and I'm gonna be rehoming this one. I believe I have somebody who's mentioned that they want this one, uh, but that's sort of, I think, on hold at the moment, so possibly pending um, its new home. Next up, I have the infamous Dark Mansion Tarot. Don't worry, I have another version of this deck. I just have decided to rehome my large sized first edition. I have the standard size second edition. This one's really, really beautiful, and if it doesn't end up finding its perfect forever home, I'm not gonna be sad to have a backup large copy of this deck, but I'm just one of those people that I just don't really want a second copy of a deck that I have that I'm working with. I just haven't ever seen the need to do that for me personally, so it just feels like if it can find a good home and get some regular use, I would prefer that it do. So um, this one was quite pricey to bring into Canada, so yeah, that's been I think the biggest challenge is that it's just a pricey deck in general, but it's in great condition. It only got used for one week before I ended up ordering the smaller version, so that is the Dark Mansion Tarot by Taroteca Studios. Next up, let's talk about the Mystical Wisdom Oracle Card Deck. This actually came in a Witch's Moon box, and it's a beautiful, beautiful deck. It's just one that doesn't really speak to me personally. It's gorgeous, but there's a lot of... And I love... I love... Um, who is this? This is... Um, oh yeah, Josephine Wall's artwork. It's really, really lovely. And the backs of these cards are some of the prettiest backs I think I've ever seen. They're so gorgeous. But every time I've tried to work with this, it's just ended up falling kind of flat for me personally. And I just would rather it go to a, a different home. It's only been used or shuffled a couple of times. And I just, yeah, I just think I want it to find the home it's really meant to find. I know that probably sounds hokey, but I really love it when decks go to homes and find... Find, find the people they're meant to be with. Why is my back of my box upside down? That's really annoying. Okay, so that is the Mystical Wisdom card deck written by Gay Guthrie, art by Josephine Wall. Um, featuring the enchanting artwork of Josephine Wall, this provide, provides guidance for the present and inspiration for the future. There are archangels, goddesses, spirit animals, fairies, and mystical creatures that deliver up, uh, uplifting messages. The guidebook is 64 pages, and there are 46 cards in the deck. Next up, I have the Wizard's Tarot. I really wanted to love this deck. I really did because it's got this really cool kind of like wizarding school sort of vibe. It's really a beautiful deck. And this has been around, not in my personal collection, but it's been around in general since like the 90s. And I managed to find a copy of this locally. And I kept wanting to work with it, but it just, I tried and it's just not for me. But this would be a really good beginner deck, I feel like, and it's got that really fun, kind of Harry Potter-ish sort of vibe to it, and I could see somebody really loving to work with this. This one is also out of print, um, which I thought I would mention. comes with a little white book. It's actually, for a little white book, pretty chunky. There are... does it have page numbers? No. But it's, it's pretty chunky, and it's in this, like, side-opening... Um, kind of flimsy box, but that's all right. So again, this one, if I haven't mentioned it yet, is out of print. Next up, let's talk about another out of print deck. <clears throat> now this may have been reprinted um, in recent years. I'm actually not sure, but I know that this particular edition is out of print. And this is the Elemental Tarot by Carolyn Smith. <clears throat> this was actually gifted to me by a friend, and I, again, I really wanted to love it but it just didn't end up really speaking to me. Um, Carolyn Smith, uh, and I don't know if John Astrup also, but I know Carolyn Smith is, actually let's take a look, because it's right here. Uh-huh, same couple. 
So Oracle of the Radiant Sun, Carolyn Smith and John Astrup. This is the same. These are the same authors in the Elemental Tarot. The Elemental Tarot, it has this sort of like very um, Egyptian kind of feel. Come on. There's this cool little postcard that talks about how the tarot begins. The Elemental Tarot contains 22 allegorical cards representing the major arcana, 56 minors, easy to comprehend symbols requiring no me memorization. I don't know if I agree with that. And a 128 page instructional book. And it's neat. It's like a hardback book. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this is a first edition. First edition, November 1988. So this is a first edition. It's in great condition. Um, that is the book. And then the cards live in their own little tuck box over here to the side. I am going to do a quick flip through of all the cards because this one isn't one that I think there's a lot of videos about. So feel free to skip ahead if this is not your thing or if you want to just see what the next deck is. As I mentioned, I'm going to be doing that in some of these just so that those of you who haven't encountered these can see them all. These are not in any particular order. I haven't reordered them yet, but here we go. And I'm just going to, I think I might just do a silent flip through on this one. One thing before actually I do that, I will just point out that there are some really neat subtexts along the side. So this is the shaman card number nine, which I'm guessing is the hermit, um, I think. And it says will. And then here it says, in my weakness, do not forsake me. And then on this side it says, do not be afraid of my power, which is really interesting. So that is the shaman. Clay. This is the four of maybe earth, I think. Yeah, this looks like the ace of water. The six of fire. The nine. Hmm, I'm going to stop guessing and just silently flip through these. So that is the Elemental Tarot by Carolyn Smith and John Astrup. First edition, out of print, copy. The cardstock is really lovely. It's very sturdy. This deck is in mint condition, and yeah, 
I just, it wasn't one that I felt called to work with. Coming up next is, sadly, the Rebel deck. <laughs> there was a time in my practice where I really, really li liked working with this deck. It does say Tarot with Attitude. This is not a Tarot deck. That's like a minor beef, but um, it's just, it's an Oracle deck um, of, of type. It's a, yeah, I'll show you. Now, this is definitely a not safe for work deck. I'm not going to read anything aloud, but there's a ton of cussing in this one. It's really quite fun. Now, I did edge my copy in matching colors to these really bright colors on the fronts, and I love the effect. But on the back, where there is, you can see that the cards did bleed. Some of them like that one quite a bit. Now, I got used to that and kind of liked that, but if this is one that you're interested in scooping up for me or buying for me or trading with me for, just be aware that there is all of that bleeding. I still love the way that the edges look though, so it was totally worth it in my opinion, but that is just me. This is just one that I felt like I reached a point in my practice where I just didn't really feel like I wanted or needed this kind of harshness, but it is really blunt and I love that it's really quite fun. <laughs> And it's a great way, a playful way to sort of call yourself out if that's something that you need in your practice. And it is something I need, but I just started to maybe find it a little overly specific for me personally. And yeah, I don't know what it is, but it is, it's playful and it's fun. It's super creative. And there's a bunch of different versions of this deck now. I think there's one for couples. There may be even one for work. I'm not sure, but these are, these are really, really fun. And they definitely got a lot of use in my practice for a time. They've just, they're just no longer something that I really want to work with on the regular. And I just don't want to hold on to it and let it collect dust when it could move on to a new home. Up next is, um... The Cheryl Richardson self-care cards. I got these in a bundle. Um, I bought some used decks from somebody on off of Facebook Marketplace, and this was in the bundle. And I thought I would just play with them and see what I think. And they're really quite pretty, and they have lovely messages on the back, but I have other self-care cards that I like better, and I just never find myself reaching for this. They're really, really beautiful, and the messages are super straightforward. There's nothing overly, like word heavy. I think somebody commented on one of my videos and said that what she does with these is she just sort of slips one in to maybe cards she gives her friends or when she sends things away she'll tuck a card in kind of as a, just a, a nice little surpri surprise. But yeah, it's beautiful and I did work with it a little bit. It's just it's not one that I'm excited to have and I just want to move it along. So that is the Self Care Cards by Cheryl Richardson. I'm pretty sure these are still in print and you can still buy them brand new. Um, on Amazon and stuff. <clears throat> Next up, this one was actually also in my last video, but I actually still have it, and that is Legend the Arthurian Tarot by Anna Marie Ferguson. <sighs> I have such mixed feelings about this deck because it is really a lovely set. Um, the box is a bit worn, but I'll show you how it comes. So you actually get this really nice full-size guidebook. Now I did do my trick and I used marker to edge for each of the suits so I could easily find my way, which does result in a little bit of page bleeding. Um, I did work my way through this guidebook. It's really quite fun because these cards are based on the Arthurian legends, which gives you a lot to sink your teeth into. Unfortunately, I found that even though I enjoy the Arthurian legends, this wasn't enough to kind of hold my interest. It also comes with, and I don't want to unfold it um, too much, but I'll unfold it part way so you can kind of see anywhere. It's in pretty good condition, but this is one of those huge spread mats. Back in the day, a lot of decks used to come with stuff like that. And these are the cards, and you know, oh, I freaking hate these sort of trays because the cards always slide under. Oh my goodness. Ah, the top opened up. I wish I'd have known that. Okay, all the cards are out of there now. Um, I love the backs of these. I think some of these are upside down. That's okay. Um, I love, love, love the backs, and I believe, did I edge these? I feel like there's like a light purple on them. Am I imagining that? I may have edged these in a very, very light purple. Or that's just the plain edges and the purple makes them look edged. I can't really tell, you guys. Maybe? <laughs> um, yeah, I think I did maybe match, do a matching color to the fronts, but it's very pale. What I don't like about these cards, and the reason I'm ultimately passing them on, is that the artwork is so, it almost looks washed out to me, like the, the characters seem very pale. These are really, really beautifully illustrated, and the borders are even really decorative. 
and you do have character names and things like that right on the cards. Oh, here we go. Now we're upside down. This whole little chunk is upside. <coughs> Excuse me. I still have a tickle in my throat. At least when I'm filming this, I do. Okay. Are these like all? There we go. Queen of Cups is Britannia. Oops. Tristram and Isolt and the Two of Cups. These do have a little bit of a bow to them as some older decks just get, but see, he looks almost green to me, and that's really ultimately the thing. I have talked about this deck in other videos. So far, I haven't found anybody that's like eager to own this, but let me know if you are, and we can definitely chit-chat. I don't mind having it in the meantime, but it would just be really lovely to have it go to a new home. I love the labyrinth um, backs of these cards, though. So, so beautiful, and the book is really well done. Um, I really enjoyed reading the book, if, if nothing else. So that is the Legend, the Arthurian Tarot, Anna Marie Ferguson. Next up, let's talk about another fun out of print. I think this is another first edition. This is the Way of Cartouche, an Oracle of Ancient Egyptian Magic by Murray Hope. Um, this is really cool, and I really enjoyed flipping through these, but I just haven't found really a whole lot of interest in actually using them with any regularity. Again, a really nice, gorgeous hardbound book with this one um, that goes into all of the cards. Um, you get quite a bit of information in here. This book is actually stiff, like it has never been opened all the way. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. The cards themselves, it's quite a thin pack. How many cards does this come with? Does it say? Um... I don't think it says here, but like, look at this book compared with this deck, which is really interesting. The cards are really cool. Oh, I was gonna double check if this was first edition. I'm pretty sure it is though, let's just see. I think I checked that before. This is 1985 Limited. I don't think it says, it just says limited, so maybe this is a limited edition version? I have no idea. I haven't actually been able to find out a lot of information about this deck. Again, it's very, very cool. So we have the Twins, Thoth, Earth, Sirius, Hathor, Nephethys, I'm not going to try to pronounce all these, Ta, Pata, I'm not sure, Osiris, Anubis, Lotus, Crook and Flail, Urius, Winged Disc, Air, water, uh, oh, set. This one's so bold with the red. Sphinx, scarab, pyramid, onk, buckle of Isis, Isis, Horus, bast, and fire. So that is it. This is what the backings look like. They're, again, really cool. And if you do any work with Egyptian magic or lore, this could be something that you really, really enjoy. But not for me. Peggy enjoyed flipping through it too because we both really are fascinated by Egyptian lore, but I just don't do a lot of work with it in my practice. So these were really fascinating for me to flip through, but that's about as far as I got with it. So again, this is the Way of Cartouche by Murray Hope. And it's, again, a really, really unique set. And again, I haven't seen anybody really talking about this one. So that is that one. Again, out of print as far as I know. Next up is another oldie that has been in my to be rehomed pile for, oh, oh, I bumped my camera, guys, sorry. For forever. This is the new Mythic Tarot. You guys, I mean, the book is really what this is all about. The book is absolutely incredible. Um, now, I have, see, again, we have a paper tray. I also kind of hate the backings of these cards. Um, the book is like, look at this. It is completely beefy. Now, mine has a little bit of like this corner sort of smush, very mild. It doesn't seem to be affecting the actual pages. Um, I haven't even cracked this because I actually have one of the early 1980 printings of the original Mythic Tarot guidebook, and I do have an out-of-print copy of the original Mythic Tarot. Um, these have been, it looks like they've been shuffled, um, but these are the ones that are the new artwork. If you're fascinated by Greek myth, this was one of my deal breaker cards, actually. I just could not get on with this particular strength card. Um, the one in the original is a lot more peaceful. But there's something about this art style I just could not get on with. And so these have just sat. I've never used them. I've looked through them. I think I 
loaned this to Peggy to see if she wanted to get on with it and she I don't think she just ever really got around to it um, but if you're finding it hard to get your hands on a copy of the Mythic Tarot, the new Mythic is really great. This is mass market. I'm pretty sure you can still buy this um, right off of Amazon or from your local bookstore. But I do have a copy just kicking around looking to find its forever home. So I'll just hold on to it until, until somebody decides they really, really want this one and wants to trade or buy it or whatever. Next up is... Chiro Marchetti's Tarot of Dreams. I will link up in the cards my video where I did a comparison of three different Chiro Marchetti decks. This one is really, really beautiful. I just don't think I'm going to end up working with it all that much. Um, I'm not going to go through these cards because I did just do that full, very detailed walkthrough. These are really great. I love the astrological symbols, and this is one of my favorite... Um, or was one of my favorite tarot decks, I should say, until I got the Tarot Grand Lux, which sort of ended up beating this one out. I have edged my copy of these cards in black. Um, oh, the backings are really beautiful too. Check that out. But yeah, these are really, really gorgeous. There's a really wonderful guidebook with these cards. Love the Kabbalah. And it's just a great learning deck. It's just not one I see myself reaching for, so I'd like to find it a good home. Another one that I am going to be rehoming is the Heartful Spirits Tarot. This is one that by all rights I should have really really got on with and to be honest I actually did get along with this deck okay. It's just that I feel like the energy this deck brings is super similar. This is just an art card that came with it. It's super similar to like my Mom's Tarot and my Happy Tarot and those are just decks that I'm going to be quicker to reach for. This is a really nice cardstock. It's going to feel flimsy um, when you handle it but that's it's actually not. It's a linen finish so it's thin but it's really quite nice. Now I had shuffled, I think, reversals into this deck. I'll just show you how it shuffles. It's really, it's really a nice shuffler as cards fly out. Um, but this is really fun because it actually has keywords. So you have an upright and a reverse keyword on every card. So I do have reversal shuffled in. Sometimes if a deck actually has reversal keywords, I will use the deck that way. But yeah, I just, this is an independent deck and I'd love to find it a good home because it's so beautiful. The creator did a fantastic job and I love these sort of whimsical, faceless creatures because I think it's easier to sort of see anybody you want. And like, look at this adorable page of swords. <coughs> Excuse me. I just think this one is so great for just, yeah, that sense of whimsy and playfulness beautiful colors. I love the pinks and the purples and the pastels. It's just a really, really sweet deck. I just know I'm not going to reach for it. The deck itself, like I said, a very nice quality. I haven't modified it in any way, um, but the box itself is a bit flimsy. Like mine is literally falling apart and it's had very light use, but it is signed by the creator. This was deck number 67. I actually got this, um, I bought this actually off of somebody um, who also had had it and I really enjoyed my time with it, but it is not one that is meant to be with me forever. So the Heartful Spirits Tarot. This is by Trisha Lee Shu. Oh, I don't know how to pronounce her last name. Shu Felt. Another one that has made its way into my collection um, is the New Century Tarot by Rolf Eichelman. Eichelman. Um, I picked this up at my local metaphysical shop. I thought it was really, really interesting, but it's another one that I don't really see myself working with. This one is in really, really nice shape, and this is another out-of-print deck, the New Century Tarot. So it has this really nice little, little white book. This was um, copyright 2003, first edition, and I'm going to do a full flip through on these cards because, again, I don't think this is one that there's a lot of videos on, so I'm going to do that. Feel free to skip ahead or fast forward until I'm done with that. I'm going to do a very quick flip through, but that way you guys get to see all of the cards. All right.
So that is all the cards of the New Century Tarot. <coughs> Excuse me. I will say, what's really cool about this deck, and again, I don't think this has ever been used, it feels brand new, um, is that it's fairly pippish through the minors, and yet, there's little hints to the meaning of all the cards in these little images that appear at the bottom. This would be a really great gateway, gateway deck for people looking to get into Marseille, because you have almost a Marseille-like feeling to the way the pips are even arranged, and yet you still have hints of the original Rider-Waite-Smith meaning um, with these bits of images that pop into the cards, and I think that's really, really cool. So that is the New Century Tarot. Also, these backs are fantastic. Love those. I love backs like this that feel very decorative. And this is a U.S. Games deck, but and there is a copyright down here. Um, it's really tiny, though. So this is a first edition, also out of print, New Century Tarot. Be really wonderful for a collector, I feel like, but it's just it's just not one that I get excited to reach for. Another one I want to talk about, which I don't think I have the bo tuck box for this deck anymore, but I do have this lovely matching Peggy bag, is the Tarot of Haunted House. This is by Sasha Graham and Mirko Fred. I'm not going to try. There's the name. Um, so this is the Tarot of a Haunted House. My copy is shuffled. This is really a fun sort of Halloween themed deck. I just didn't get on with it. As beautiful as it is, and it's really fun because the Little White Book is written in a narrative style. It's like you're literally in a story. Um, this is super fun, but I just wanted to reach for my other Halloween decks instead. So I knew I wanted to find this one a new home before next Halloween, or at least, you know, I'm not going to be reaching for it next Halloween. So that is Tarot of a Haunted House. Again, really gorgeous, nice cardstock. It's, I guess, the good Llewellyn cardstock, um, and really cool scene on the back. I haven't modified it. It has a little bit of a mild, I guess, bow from shuffling. Very, very hard to tell, but it's really quite lovely. I'll see if I can find the tuck box for it, but regardless, um, I will ship it to whomever with the bag. Next up, oh, the nostalgia. Um, I have, I believe this is actually the second edition of the Naked Heart Tarot. I bet it says in the book. Let's check. The Naked Heart Tarot is beautiful, and the only reason this is leaving my collection is because I have the third edition. So this is, yeah, this is the second edition. I love the third edition. I actually really love the guidebook in the second edition. It's wonderful for beginners. Um, but I also really, really love the changes to the guidebook in the third edition, so I think I'm ready to let this one find a new home. Now, there is a couple loose-ish pages in here because it's so thick that the binding didn't really want to hold. So much information in this second edition guidebook. This is really quite a treasure. I considered keeping this just for that reason, but I also, again, I just have a thing about keeping decks that are just going to sit and not necessarily see a lot of use, and I love, I really do think I prefer the third edition. Why are some of my cards upside down? Why? Um, but if you haven't seen The Naked Heart, man, you're missing out. This is such a beautiful, um, kind of simplistic, um, clear, concise deck. Um, lots of white space, which I actually don't normally love, but I really do enjoy in this deck. I really enjoy the use of animals and nature throughout these cards. I think Peggy must have used this one. She always shuffles in reversals. Um, yeah. But it's just all of the nature and animals that you see in this deck, all of them make sense. They all work. The symbolism is actually everything you need to read is here. So it actually is a very beginner-friendly deck in spite of its simplicity. And when I first saw this, I thought it was going to be a little bit on the pippish side, but it's not at all. Like, one of my favorite hermit cards ever. I love the idea of the turtle for the hermit. It just really, really works. And I love these panthers in the swords. And, of course, I love seeing antlered animals in the pentacles. Just really, really a wonderful, wonderful deck. And Jillian puts her heart and soul into everything she does. And I just really, really enjoy this. Again, the only reason I would be letting this copy go is because I have the third edition, which I just adore, and that's the one I tend to reach for. But this is really a treasure, and, you know, this just needs to find a home. Somebody's going to use it and love on it. 
uh, Jillian's cardstock is lovely. It's a nice, thick deck. Um, it shuffles beautifully. I'll just give you an idea since this one's already kind of... It's a smooth mat. It's just a dream to work with. Love, 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 love. But again, this second edition guidebook is pretty special and different than the third. So that was the main reason I wanted to hold on to it, but I just, I really do love her third edition. So that is the Naked Heart Tarot by Jillian C. Wild. Such, such a treasure, but ready to find a new home. Next up, I did do a video um, about this particular deck and I will try to remember to link it up in the cards because that goes through all of the cards. But this is the Dream Raven Tarot by Beth Salinen. I, this one will also um, ship with this beautiful kind of sparkly teal Peggy bag. But this deck is really beautiful. I actually really love the art style. I haven't modified this deck. I got this deck in a trade. Um, but in the end, I just couldn't get on with it personally. So you can watch my video that I link. It's a knockout between this deck or like a kind of a head-to-head -head sort of live stream I did where I was comparing this deck to the Crow Tarot, which wasn't entirely a fair comparison because they're so different. But this one has really does have that sort of dreamy quality. Like the name Dream Raven is so perfect for this deck. It's very sort of surreal and trippy in a way. Very soft, but not overly gentle, I don't think. It's just not one that I ended up getting on with. And I had issues with some of the cards not feeling like, to me, they were easy to read. But I know that there are people that just love this deck. So again, that is the Dream Raven Tarot by Beth Salinen. This one is still in print as far as I know. It is a mass market deck. Um, these cards are quite big, and I think this deck would look really gorgeous trimmed. In fact, I feel like somebody showed me pictures of this one trimmed, and it did look just beautiful. So that is the Dream Raven Tarot by Beth Salinen. Next up is a very quirky deck that I came across and I just had to pick it up, if for no other reason than to look through it. This is the Cagliostro Tarot deck and this is by, does it even say who it's by? US Games, okay, well, no idea. Um, there are zodiac dates on each minor arcana card, key meanings printed on each card. Um, it is the 56 minors, 22 majors, but it just is very trippy to look at. It does come with this little white book. This one is out of print, and this is the, does it say what edition this is? I'm guessing first, but I have no idea. Copyright 1981. So this has been around for a very long time. Cardstock's really, really nice. This is what the backs look like, and they've got almost like a sheen. There's like a gold metallic foil to the backings, and it says Modiano and it has all the astrological houses, signs. Um, this is another one that I'm gonna do a quick silent flip through on for those that are interested. So I'm gonna zoom us in. And remember that if you don't wanna see all of the cards, you can skip ahead.
Okay, so that is the Cagliostro Tarot deck. Let me just zoom us back out here. So I will say that there's some interesting things about these cards. They definitely have Marseille miners. Um, they do have lots and lots of keywords printed on them, but they have this sort of old world fortune teller -y kind of feel. <coughs> Excuse me. Which is actually really cool. There are these um, zodiacal dates written on here, but also at the bottom of most of the miners you have these date spreads. So this says 1st through the 6th of March, 20th of May to the 2nd of June, um, 11th to the 19th of February, 20th of June to the 2nd of July. I mean, if you do phone readings or time-based readings for clients, for example, this could actually be a really, really cool deck to work with. And a lot of the keywords definitely are very, like, fortune teller -y kind of feel. They're really fun. It's just not something I think I'm going to ultimately play with, but I really enjoyed flipping through them. So yeah, this is the Cagliostro Tarot deck. Um, maybe just do some research on that and let me know if this is something you're interested in. But for now, it's just going to kick around in my pile of decks to be rehomed. Yeah, this is from 1981, U.S. Games. Really nice cardstock, good U.S. Games cardstock. Um, yeah, so that is the Cagliostro Tarot. Just a few more left. So next up is a deck that I've had for a while. I was sent one of these decks by a subscriber and I also had one myself that I had trimmed. But this is the Crystal Tarot and it is a pippish deck that has this like kind of cool stained glass feel to the artwork. It's really vivid and beautiful. I just found that I was not excited to work with this particular deck and I love the jewel tones, I love the sort of old world feel. It's really quite special, it's just for whatever reason we just did not get along like I thought we would. Um, this is Los Carabeo, it is really sturdy feeling cardstock, especially now that it's trimmed um, and it just, it's really easy to handle, it's a pretty even trim job all the way around. There's some unevenness but not too bad. And because it's been trimmed, it definitely has a very um, kind of compact, almost Trump-sized or poker-sized miniature feel to it, which is really nice. But yeah, this is just one that I've just been looking to rehome for a while now. It's just not one I'm going to be working with. I do only have one copy now. I did manage to rehome the other one at some point. So that is the Crystal Tarot. Next up I have another out of print deck by Los Scarabeo, so I'm going to be doing a full flip through of this one. And this is the Dante Tarot, uh, the Divine Comedies Allegories Lead Along the Path of Life, with Cardamantic Construction 78 Arcana of Art and Soul. This is a Llewellyn, no, Los Scarabeo. It's so funny, it's got the little moon which I associate with Llewellyn, but I believe Llewellyn owns Los Scarabeo. I'm not sure how that works. In any case, um, this is the Dante Tarot. Let's see if we can figure out what edition this was or where the, when the copyright is. So we have like a fold out pamphlet style booklet. Ah, here we go, 2001 copyright. And it has, it looks like an Italian um, address on here. I don't know if that means that it was printed <laughs> in Italy. I'm actually not sure. Um, it's actually a really sturdy feeling little pamphlet. Like, you know how these sometimes feel like they're made out of really flimsy paper? This actually feels pretty um, nice. There is the title card. Now, this is a low scarabeo, so you will see multiple languages on the cards. And what does this tell us? Copyright, all rights revert, res reserved. It doesn't say. Oh, this is just a list of low scarabeo decks. Oh, check out the backs. Is that the backs? Oh, the backs are really pretty. <laughs> Excuse me, this is another one that I did pick up at a local metaphysical store. Um, I don't know why the King of Flames is here. It looks like everything else may be in order. Flames, there we go. Okay. Oh, there's two King of Flames. Oh, interesting. I'm going to put this in order, but there are two different pieces of artwork for the King of Flames. Now, I don't know a lot about Dante... This, this Dante Tarot at all. Again, I found this in my local metaphysical shop. I thought it might be fun to trade or something like that. I'm going to zoom us in and do a full flip through, so remember to skip ahead if you don't want to see that. I'm going to do it silent and fairly quickly because this video is already going to be mega long, but here we go.
So that is the Dante Tarot. This is again what the backs look like. This is just not an art style that I particularly am drawn to. It is really cool though. Um, there's neat suit symbols up in the top left. So you have the Roman numerals for the majors. Then you have bricks, which I'm assuming is earth. You have flames, which I'm assuming is fire. You have lights, which looks like it's earth. And clouds, which looks like air. I'm confused. Okay, so wait, 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 wait. So we have bricks, flames, lights and clouds. Bricks, flames, lights and clouds. So lights must be the cup suit. It looks like it might be. It's got that sort of softer... Huh, I wonder if it actually says in the introduction. In the minor can, so the wands become bricks, okay? Swords are flames, clouds are pentacles, and lights are cups. That's super confusing, but hey, I know that some people collect decks for the artwork, um, and this is very, very, very cool artwork. It's just not for me, and that whole confusing thing with the miners is also not for me, but that is the Dante Tarot again. This deck is out of print, so yeah, that is that one. And I have one last deck to share with you, and I was super excited to find this, but I don't think I'm going to be interested in working with it. And this is the Buddha Tarot by Robert M. Place. This is also out of print um, and pretty coveted from what I understand. So it does come with a just a copy of the deck in this organza bag and a little white book. This is just sort of like a space filler here, and it talks about how to carry care for your cards and it's actually a tuck box so if you choose you can actually keep your cards in this tuck box it says you can use this box to store your cards just detach this flap at the perforated edge um, and it talks about caring for them and that's pretty cool so this is in really nice condition um, the Buddha Tarot. I love Robert M. Place's work and this little white book looks like it's actually pretty meaty and decent uh, for sure and again, because this deck is out of print, I am going to do a quick, full, fast flip through for you. So I know this video is going to be long. I'm going to try to remember to put timestamps down below so you can just watch the parts of this that you really want to. I don't believe these are in order. They don't appear to be. So I'm just going to go through them. And yeah, these, these feel like they're in perfect condition. Really nice cardstock. It's like that silky, smooth, sturdy cardstock. It just feels really, really nice. Oh, I've got some upside down. All right, so I'm going to zoom us in and I'm going to flip through the cards and we will see where we end up.
Okay, so that is the Buddha Tarot by Robert M. Place. I know that this deck has been very highly sought after. Now I will say that there's some wonderful color coding here. We have green borders around the Vajras, I don't know if that's how you say them, yellow around the jewels, red around the lotuses, um, and green, yeah, green around those, blue around the Vajras. So that actually looks like it might not be too hard to get used to the system once you know which is which suit. Um, and it does look like there are hints of Rider Waite Smith featured here. It's just a matter of getting used to the cards. And Robert M. Place always does a beautiful job of explaining his methodology. And I love this art. Like, this is just stunning. I just know that this deck would be neglected in my collection, as beautiful as it is. So this one will be finding a new home at some point. So I'm just going to pop that relationship card, spread card, right on the very top. And putting this all back together. So there we go. Actually, let's just take a quick look at the suits. I'm just curious. So... It looks like Major Arcana, talks about the Eightfold Path, the Vajra, <coughs> excuse me, the Vajras are related to the Suit of Swords, the Jewels are related to The suit of coins, which makes sense. The double Vajras. Oh, wait, let's do lotuses. I'm pretty sure lotuses should be water, right? I'm thinking. Ah, lotuses. Uh, they are... Oh, no, lotuses are wands or staffs, which means that the double Vajras are the suit of cups. Yep, suit of cups in the tarot. So it's all explained in the guidebook. This is the 2004 printing, and this is the first edition, 2004. So that is the Buddha Tarot by Robert M. Place. All right, that actually concludes my list of decks that I'm going to be rehoming. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. It was really fun to take you through all of those decks. As I said before, I'll try to have timestamps so, so you can skip to the flip throughs that you wanna see or the decks that you wanna hear about. But as always, I hope you are having a beautiful, wonderful day and I will see you all again soon. Bye.